I'm excited to have this panel today. Um, has anyone heard of American Cancer Society, a small little nonprofit? Yeah, no, uh, you know, I heard earlier 3.2 million volunteers is one thing that I wrote down. Uh, but I wanna introduce both these uh, lovely ladies here. Let's start with Devin. Um, I, I'd love to start these things, first of all, too, with both of you, just kind of hearing the background. We're all industry people. Like, where did you come from? Like, oh, I worked there, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. So maybe start here um, with Devin, kind of your background, kind of where you come from. Uh, she's a Phoenician, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll start that and come back to Kimberly. I'm a fake Phoenician. I'm a transplant. <laughs> As of five years ago, I know that's an important differentiation. But yeah, my name's Devin Hurley. For, before I get into my intro, my background, just want to call out the elephant in the room. I am not the former first lady of Arkansas basketball. I know she was supposed to be here today to speak with you guys. And if you were um, staying in tune with some of the speaker announcements with brand innovators, you, you probably saw that. Hopefully, we have a lot of college basketball fans in the room today, so you probably also saw the announcement yesterday that the Musclemans are moving to Los Angeles, and Eric Musselman has taken the head coaching job for USC. So, needless to say, Danielle had other priorities she had to, to be at today, and I'm happy to step in and try to fill those shoes the best that I can. So, my name is Devin Hurley. I'm our uh, National Strategic Director for Enterprise Corporate Partnerships at the American Cancer Society. So. In my role, I have the privilege of working with Fortune 500 national brands, national corporate partners for win-win strategic alignment and holistic relationships that ultimately drive the mission of ACS forward. Previous to that, I uh, was at Boston Children's Hospital leading corporate partnerships for Boston Children's Hospital, and then uh, most recently was at Make-A-Wish America for about five years leading national partnerships for Make-A-Wish America, and then during that time, also managed our national relationship with the NCAA. So I've worked with college sports for quite a bit. I also was a college athlete. I played field hockey for um, the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. So love to hear the recognition that females in sports are finally getting the well-deserved recognition that they, they always deserve. Thanks for having me. All right, Kimberly. Uh, love to hear from, from Atlanta, Georgia here today. I uh, love to hear kind of your background in the industry and your role with American Cancer Society to start us off. Yeah, so um, I lead the Southeast region, and so that falls anywhere from Virginia all the way down to Florida, over to Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, I've been back at the ACS for the last two years. Uh, before that, spent some time at the American Heart Association, before that was with the American Cancer Society for 10 years. And so I don't know how I ended up in nonprofit. My background is finance and operations, but it's actually through divine intervention, ended up losing my mother to colorectal cancer. So coming back to the American Cancer Society every day, I am living out the purpose of ensuring that there aren't any other club members who have lost love, love uh, loved ones and family members um, to cancer. So um, I'm a mother of um, four children, um, two bonus, two of my own, and it's fascinating to see all the athletes because they're my kids' age. So I'm like, oh my gosh, either I'm getting old or they're getting younger. I don't know what's going on. So, but glad, glad to be here today. So thank you. Welcome. Um, okay, so American Cancer Society, what's cool is I love how well themed this is with March Madness. Um, and your partnership with, with college basketball coaches is certainly legendary. Um, but maybe start out with, with you, Devin. You know, talk to us a little bit about um, the relationship with the NCAA. You've worked with them before. Uh, what does the partnership look like? What can we see this year? How is that different from other years? Um, and, and how does it not, I, I could just ask a million questions in one. So um, how, does, uh, how does that differentiate from other nonprofits out there in terms of earned media? That's a great question. I'll kick it off and then I'll hand it over to, to Kim to, to really finish it out. But we are so lucky at the American Cancer Society because we've had the privilege of having a long standing partnership with the National Association of Basketball Coaches, um, actually over three decades, to the tune of $160 million raised on average $10 million a year. And that is through the influencer and leadership support from college basketball coaches across the nation. That is a program that we are so incredibly proud of for, for many, many different reasons. 
the revenue that has helped drive our mission forward, clearly funding research and ultimately saving lives, but also the relationships that we've built with these college basketball coaches and how they show up for the American Cancer Society. So I think when we think about other partnerships that you see with the nonprofit space and with the NCAA or the NABC or other sports leagues, the NFL, NBA, this looks different because it is really, really driven by the leadership of these college basketball coaches. But Kim, what did I miss? No, I think you covered it. Um, and you know, there are about 5,000 coaches that are part of um, this partnership and um, yeah, $160 million, um, give or take, in the last 30 years. So that equates to $10 million annually. But think about the influence um, that it has on the communities and uh, the members of, of the basketball community and the coaches, the athletes, et cetera. So it's an incredible partnership, as you heard. We are volunteer-led, staff-supported. So there's like 3,000 of us that work, but millions of um, volunteers. So we're appreciative of the partnership. What do you think other nonprofits can learn with a unique partnership like this? And you know, maybe even as marketers, where are we missing out on opportunities? And the thing that I can't get over, again, I ask a million questions in one, um, how does it, how do the coaches align to one charity having so many different, you know, things I'm sure they're involved in and, and different charities that they have uh, alignment with? You may have to remind me about this. Right, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I just have all these questions. Wait, what about this? What about right. that? Um, so what was the first question? The first question is what can other charities and nonprofits um, learn uh, yeah. about partnerships? Um, and I think that's what I asked. Yeah, something, yeah, something, something like that, right? That. Um, so I think what others can learn is, and it goes back to the formula of volunteer-led, staff-supported. And so there are eight powerful words that we use at the American Cancer Society is to end cancer as we know it for everyone. So what that means is a multiplier effect. We have the data, we have the, you know, we are the uh, book of knowledge when it comes to cancer facts and figures that everyone references. So we have the statistics, but without powerful partnerships with corporations, et cetera, it goes nowhere. So it is crucial for those powerful partnerships. You know, Devin um, and her leadership with the corporate strategic partnership, that's a big part of it. Um, also, uh, we have area boards, and there's about 52 across the country that are made up of leaders. So we provide the information, almost like the field of dreams from my perspective. Here's what's going on. Y'all, two million people will be diagnosed with cancer this year for the first time ever. We've got to get that information out to employers, right? What's the impact as a CEO of a company? So that's one thing they can learn. What's your second question? The second, how, how, does, how, how does, I mean, it's a 35-year-old yeah. partnership, obviously. Um, you see the coaches, they're big personalities, they have been for a long time, in, especially in college basketball, especially during March Madness. How do, I mean, it's hard to get yeah. five people to agree on something. How do you yeah. get, you know, thousands of coaches to be like, yeah, the okay. American Cancer Society, that's, that's our thing. Right, and so what I'll say is, um, you know, we have experience in other nonprofits, but raise your hand if you've been touched by cancer. Exactly, right? So that's the point of when you're thinking about it. And, you know, there, there is a need. When you hear those words or a family member, you have a need to react. So unfortunately, um, these coaches have family members, players, families of players that are impacted, that impact their ability to play, to focus on those things. So it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy, but at the same time, it's unfortunate that cancer is so prevalent. And so it makes it um, more compelling um, to be able to um, have those strategic partners and for coaches to say, this is the one. The other part is coaches follow coaches, right? So initially we started this partnership, um, Norm Stewart, 30 years ago, it started with him um, just deciding we're gonna donate for every three point shot. And then next thing you know, he recruits another coach and so on and so forth and now we're here. Long Kruger, he provides transportation we have a program called Road to Recovery. Y'all, one of the main barriers to people completing treatment is their inability to make it to treatment. For whatever reason, I don't want to bother people. So we have volunteer drivers. We're actively recruiting 10,000 at this moment. Long Kruger was one of them, and we videotaped him driving someone to treatment. 
And that is incredible. So that's literally helping to end cancer as we know it for everyone. Um, so providing those opportunities for the coaches, et cetera. So really meeting them where they are and what's passion, what they're passionate about. Devin, I know you want to jump in. Go ahead. I mean, beautifully said. There's not much more I can add to that. But I was going to say what I think is having worked in sports nonprofit partnerships in the past, what I think makes CBC so incredibly special is that it really is mission first. And that's what coaches get involved. That's why they're willing to tap into their fans and their communities to get involved is because it's mission driven. They believe in the work and they're thought leaders with us in this work. And then guess what? The, the earned media comes with that. The revenue that drives our mission forward comes along with that, but they are thought leaders and advocates and champions for our mission first and foremost. And the other components have come along with it as we've grown the partnership year over year. We have a, a council of coaches that really drive the engagement, some of the ones that Kim just mentioned, but they are really tapping into their communities and their networks and even their corporate partnerships to help open up doors for the American Cancer Society because they are leaders in this mission and this work with us. And it, it sounds like, I mean, when you say CDC, I had to write this down, coaches versus cancer. Um, what I'm hearing, this feels like the OG of influencer marketing campaigns of 35 years ago. And what I love and what I'm hearing and what I mostly love about the campaign and, and the partnership is you're educating coaches who, who have platforms who then are educating other people. Um, and really the power of the marketing isn't necessarily the campaign or the media that's bought, it's really the story and the education to thought leaders in their own community. And then it's just spreading out like wildfire and you guys continue to stoke that flame. Anything like you want to add to, to the partnership? I might have a ton of notes, um, you know, and, and I, I even heard something about D1 coaches partnering up with Fortune 500 company uh, executives. Yeah. Where I was like, holy, like this, yeah. this influencer campaign continues, which obviously we know how successful those are today. So this is such a different but relevant take on it. I just, I just love it. Yeah, there is. And so... Um Another example, right, it's, it's the influence. So North Carolina, um, last year, uh, we passed Medicaid expansion. So that means that 600,000 residents of North Carolina will now have insurance and coverage, right? Um, and the biggest catalyst of all was Coach Williams. He came along with us to talk to the legislators who love him, right? My goodness. I don't care who you are, who doesn't love Coach Williams, right? So him coming forward and saying, listen, this is something that you need to do. That is incredible. So that's that leverage. Um, another thing with corporate partners and thinking about, you know, I also want to talk about, you know, what does that mean for you as a corporate partner and how do, how do we marry the two? So one thing I think we do very well is we're a catalyst, right? So you have the Cancer Society, you have the coaches, but then there's corporations as well. So thinking about if you're leading a corporation and what we do is we have some of our coaches in the area connect with the CEOs of um, the coach in that area to figure out how they want to mobilize and join forces. Um, another is around um, supporting their galas, their, their fundraisers. So the Musclemans, for example, in Arkansas, they raise a million dollars for suits and sneakers gala, right? So who doesn't love that? Um, but also the multiplier effect. I mean, if you're if part of a corporation and you offer benefits to your employees who represent everyone, that we're trying to end it for everyone. And so we have the resources. So you offer these benefits, but the reality is somebody's going to hear those words. A family member is going to perhaps disrupt what they can do. So we offer the extension of it, right? To know about the 24 hour number that you can call. So a lot of our coaches record PSA this weekend. We have a room where we pull them in and we ask them to talk about certain things that we're doing. So those are ways that, you know, the connectors with corporations, coaches, and ultimately we are helping to end cancer as we know it for everyone. And to build on that a little bit, so last year we launched a new program called Set the Screen through CBC, and this was totally voluntary for the coaches to participate in, but they would tap into a Fortune 500 CEO in their network, as, as Kim had mentioned, to align on screening and awareness messaging. It, it was not a direct revenue ask or show for support. It was, can you show up as a partner to help us get this critical information out to your community? One example of that that I can share is Coach Dana Ford 
was able to connect with the CEO of O'Reilly Auto Parts. And we were able last year to put together some videos, some PSAs with the coach, with the CEO that was shared throughout all of O'Reilly's network and even amplified <coughs> at a national conference in front of thousands of their associates. So that's some of a, a, a concrete example of how these coaches are really showing up and tapping into their community. Um, we, we've all heard of great campaigns, you know, in the nonprofit world that, you know, that, that again, wave out to the community at large, like things like ALS, you know, bucket challenge, you remember, but I love this suits and sneakers idea, like especially now with culture of, you know, sneakers and suits, like it just fits so well. Can you talk more about that and how that came about, uh, how it came about, how long it's been going? Um, do, will the announcers be talking about it, like when they have the sneakers on at the game? Like I just think it's super cool. Yeah, I'll let Devin probably talk more about that. Yeah. So, and Suits and Sneakers is probably our opportunity for the most visibility when we're thinking about brand partnerships and having corporate partners align with CBC through ACS. Uh, that is uh, a week event during March where we encourage all of our coaches that are involved in CBC to rock their coolest sneakers, their best sneakers, while they're also rocking their suit. So at the time it was transformational because uh, people were like, oh, these fancy coaches who always show up in these suits are wearing sneakers. Now it's changed a little bit because the suits are what throws people off now these days. <laughs> Um, but what we see is it, it's such an organic way to tie it back to the American Cancer Society. So throughout that entire week and leading up to that event too, when they're rocking their suits and they're rocking their sneakers, they're also talking about screening, they're also talking about the American Cancer Society, they're tying it all together in media interviews, their teams are talking about it, and we're amplifying through social media and through paid media and earned media. So. Uh, it's it's another great way to again amplify our message while raising critical funds and highlighting the partners, the corporate partners that get to be a part of this work with us. That's awesome. I just love I just love that. Can we how, and how long? Like when did that start? Did anyone know? I'm gonna Patrick. Do you know? A long time a ago. A long time. Not I mean, you, quite 30 years ago, but certainly it's been in existence. You could before. almost probably contribute some of the sneakers with suits probably from that from that original campaign and how it even developed more into pop culture, I would think. We also have a sneaker camp that goes around at the games <laughs> and really captures people's sneakers. And um, to Kim's point earlier, Danielle, who is a huge advocate, because I'm remiss to not mention this, but we have a wives' council that's a part of Coaches versus cancer, uh, but coaches versus cancer, and they are champions and advocates and and huge proponents of our mission. Danielle being one of our top volunteers and driving that forward, but at the Arkansas Gala that she really chairs and leads and spearheads, we also have secret camp. So that thing is everywhere, and it is it's a very cool component, but also an option for brand visibility because. We can put logos on the sneaker cam and we can amplify it through that capacity. So we're really thinking a couple different lens here, how we can market the partnership, how we can support the coaches and how we can amplify the messaging. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it. We're going to end here, but I just thought, again, you know, the, the main points that I continue to hear that I think is encouraging for us as marketers is the power of influence, the power of storytelling, the power of partnerships and, and corporate partnerships. Um, so, you know, when we're complaining we don't have enough budget, I, I just wonder, are we really finding the right story? Do we really have the right partners? Um, are we really tying it together in the right way? Because we're not talking about paid media in this instant. We're talking about earned media and influencers, um, which is adding huge numbers. I mean, the, I mean again, 55 million um, people served in, in, in the U.S. plus. Um, that are that are battling cancer by this organization. So 3.2 million volunteers. So thank you um, And quickly go ahead. Yeah, I think the, the the one thing I always talk about is You know you talk about return on investment return on investment And I think the next level the opportunity is return on investment and return on impact to be able to report the you know the you know the the reach but what does that reach turn into? It turns into Medicaid expansion. It turns into more drivers for road to recovery, which actually means someone is able to successfully complete their treatment, thus ending cancer as we know for everyone. So return on impact as well as return on investment. Hear that media, no more impressions, return on impact. I want to hear more. Does anyone have a question? Um, hi, I'm Marcel Mrenkovich and I'm the CMO of Nissan. And um, we would love to get together and have a meeting and really talk about that. I think there's a lot of synergies 
um, for us. Um, my dad has cancer. He's struggling right now. I don't think I had a question. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to blubber, but it's been a hard journey. So, um, I'd love to get together. Hopefully I won't cry in my session, so I'll try not to talk about that and the rest of it, but um, thank you for all you do, and we would love to get together. We're up here with the agency, we're just talking about there's so much synergy in between uh, what we have, and getting to appointments is really hard, and we have something called cars. <laughs> I don't know if you know about those. There's a lot of them. There's the Rogue, there's the Pathfinder. <laughs> there's the Z, I don't know, the GTR. Whatever those things are, we have some of those. I'm trying to make it light now, because I'll cry more. Um, but yeah, we would love to get together, um, and we'll, we'll exchange information, because I think there's a lot of things we can do. And I'm really into sneaker culture. We just uh, launched the all new kicks, and that's all about sneakers and about that culture. So looking forward to doing more things and uh, supporting and and working with y'all. So thank you. Well, thank you. So first of all, thank you for sharing that. So we cry all the time. And um, what I can assure you is you have a tribe that supports you. And um, the fact that you're turning that into what can I do. Um, so welcome to the tribe of support. I'll even talk to you about what you, the resources for you, your family, et cetera. I mean, we are literally here for you. So thank you. Thank you. Let's do that after my speech. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole thing. My mascara is running, but thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll just I'll add real quick to that. Thank you so much for sharing your personal connection. I know it's not easy. My um, grandmother passed away on Friday after a long battle with thyroid cancer. We all have these connections, unfortunately. How do we change this trajectory so that nobody has to cry during panel sessions <laughs> about their loved ones? And um, it's just it's just really, really difficult. But in addition to that, Infinity was actually a keystone partner for CBC for many years. So uh, let's revisit and we'll have that conversation yeah, offline. Infinity, just <laughs> Yeah, does anyone else have one more question before we head into the next fireside track? Okay, ladies and gents, give it up for this awesome, oh, just kidding, what an awesome Well, less of a question and more of a commentary. I just love that you're normalizing that conversation because a lot of times when it comes to those types of topics, it's incredibly personal and incredibly sensitive, but education helps us in process. Plus, it helps us all share. So thank you.